Welcome for a physics lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to introduce what we call the eating effects of an electric current. Eating effects the eating effect of an electric current. So it is very evident that when a conductor carrying current is held by your aunt, then you will experience some warmth in this conductor. Even bulbs, when you hold a bulb, you find that there are actually some of them which produce a lot of heat. That's an evidence that uh, a current passing through a conductor causes an eating effect. It causes an eating effect. Therefore, it is good to know that this eating effect uh, in a conductor is as a result of the collision between electrons and the particles in the conductor, which are from conductors. So you find a conductor can have electrons which conduct electricity, but there are other particles in that conductor which are not good conductors. Therefore, when these electrons are colliding with these atoms in the conductor, the continuous collisions are the ones which generate a lot of energy and it is felt as it. Therefore, you find that the current as it passes in a conductor, it leaves an eating effect. So there is what we call eating effect on electric current. So it is important to note that according to, to Joule, James Joule, the scientist who came up with or the first one to investigate the eating effect, he concluded that three factors affect the amount of heat produced by a current passing through a conductor. And these factors are time, T, the amount of current, I, and the resistance, R, of the conductor. And <coughs> this gentleman, James Joule concluded that the amount of energy, heat energy, H, is directly proportional. Directly proportional to the square of current, also directly proportional to directly proportional to resistance and directly proportional to time t. Therefore, the heat energy produced is directly proportional to I squared R and time t. This implies that if we introduce a constant which is 1 and an equal sign, then heat produced equals to current squared times r times t the time through which or the time during which the current has passed through a given conductor therefore we have <coughs> the heat produced being given by that formula according to james joule it is very important <coughs> we master something uh, just in the same topic just in the same topic we are seeing that uh, <coughs> the amount of heat energy produced is given by I squared times resistance of the conductor times time T. So we can relate, <coughs> we can relate the relationship between electrical power, electrical power and what we call and what we call uh, the heat energy electrical power and the electrical energy the energy produced 
are they related in a way? Are they related in a way? So we can examine whether they can be related. It is very important to borrow something from Ohm's law. Because we know that V equals to IR, then we can also see that it implies that R is equal to V out of I. Therefore, in this expression or repetition, instead of resistance R, we can use V R instead. So we can say H is given by instead of R, we can have I squared and instead of R, we have V over I applied by T. The I cancels this side. We have one current cancelling because this one is squared and this is current. Therefore, we can say that V times current, now not squared, multiplied by T. Therefore, <coughs> again, the amount of each energy produced is equal to VIT. It is very important. We mentioned that <coughs> we can by time divide through by T. By time t, and this will give us energy divided by time, which is equals to b times i. By definition, energy divided by time or the rate of conversion of energy is called power. Therefore, energy out of time gives us what we call power. Therefore, we can conclude that electrical power p is given by voltage times current in a given conductor. Voltage times time in a given conductor. This one we can call it equation one. Then we proceed to see whether we can get another equation to relate this. According to, <coughs> again, Ohm's law, we know that uh, we know that V equals to IR. V equals to IR. So at this stage, Instead of V, we can use IR, and we can say that power equals to, instead of V, we have I, R, times I. So in V, in equation 1, we can replace it with IR, which means power can also be given by I squared times R. Equation 2, I squared times R. Again, in this equation, instead of I, current electricity, from Ohm's law, which says that voltage equals to IR, then we can say I equals to V out of R. And in this equation, instead of I, we can have V over R. Which means power, again, can be given by V multiplied by I. Instead of I, we have V over R. Which means power can equal to V squared divided by I. So this is the third equation third equation, third equation. Therefore, <coughs> electrical power can be given by VI, electrical power can be given by I squared times R, and I squared divided by resistance of the conductor. So that said, we can check a few examples as we wind up. So we can just take a few calculations. A few calculations as we wait. Example. Electrical eater as an electrical eater. Is rated. 2.0 kilowatts when connected to when connected to 2 volts supply supply then we
determine the Roman 1 resistance of the element. Resistance of the element, Roman 2, current through the element, current through the element, and Roman 3, heat generated. Generated by the eta element in 30 minutes the heat generated in 30 minutes. So we can go through this question very fast. We are being told that <coughs> an electrical heater is rated 2.0 kilowatts when connected to a 240 volt supply. Determine the resistance of the, the resistance of the elements in that heater, the current through the elements, and also the heat generated solution. It's important the quantities which have been provided, the power has been provided as 2.0 kilowatts, which means 2,000 watts. Then we have voltage. We have voltage, which has been given as a 240 volts. Then we are told to first of all determine resistance. So, out of the equations we have written, we need an equation which will relate PV and resistance. That equation is the equation which says that power is given by V squared out of R. So here we can have V squared, it is 240 by 240 divided by a resistance which we don't know should give us power which is 2K. Should give us power which is 2K. So 2000 divided by resistance. So you can multiply by resistance here and by resistance here, such that to remain with the resistance, we have to divide these ones by 2000. Therefore, 240 by 240 divided by 2000 divided by 2000. This gives us 28.8 ohms. 28.8 ohms. Therefore, the resistance is 28.8 ohms. Let me check whether we can use an alternative whereby we can consider P as VI such that we can use a power of 2000 equals to V240 times current, which you don't know, which means current can be given by 2000 by 240, giving us 8.33. So now with current, we can follow Ohm's law, which says that uh, V equals to IR and R equals to V divided by I. Therefore, we can take 240 out of 8.33. This will give us 28.8 ohms. Therefore, alternatively, we can just follow this method. First of all, we get current, then we apply Ohm's law. We get resistance at 28.8. So, which means that now, uh, in the process, we have solved for Roman 2 because we wanted current. So, we have solved Roman 2. We have solved Roman 2. That is okay. The heat generated. We say that heat generated is given by V I T or it generated is given by I squared R T. So because we have current, we have R resistance and we have time T. We can follow any of these methods. Therefore, we can say that each energy is given by following method one we will have 240 times a current of 8.33 times time, which is uh, 30 minutes times 60 to make them seconds. So 30 by 60, 30 by 60 and this gives us 
this gives us a 240 multiplied by 8.33 multiplied by 30 multiplied by 60 gives us 3.6 times 10 power 6 joules the energy is 3.0 3.6 times 10 power 6 joules alternatively we can apply method so that is b i t the second method which is talking of i squared so current squared which will be squared then we multiply it with so following the second method i squared rt so a current of 8.3 times multiply by time 30 minutes times 60 so this will give us multiplied by 30, multiplied by 60. This will give us the same answer, 3.6 times 10 power 6 joules. So we can follow any of these methods to give us the heat energy produced by this filament. Thank you for following. Kindly subscribe to Shifting Grades and share the link. Thank you.